Great, we are going on air. Hello. Good evening. Welcome to the <laughs> Open Houses versus Spring of Friend Nights. The, the face off between Joe Gannett and Carol Carter attending. <sighs> now, some of you I recognize as leaders in your club or leaders in your area. And uh, I know that open houses are a big thing because we've just gone through Toastmasters month. And I know that many clubs were doing open houses. So just quickly in the chat, share a couple of things that you that surprised you when you attended or when you tried to put on an open house so we can address some challenges. I'm just looking in the chat. While I'm waiting for you to put items down there, Joe, you've attended open houses. What did you notice about open houses? Oh, oh I can see your mouse. Well, okay, open right. houses, unfortunately, are a lot of work. That's what Rick says. <laughs> they are a lot of work. Uh, Roberta said that they had an open house in January. It wasn't necessarily like bring in people. Yeah. So these are some of the challenges that clubs face. There's a couple reasons why. And there's if a couple you ways. advertise and you advertise food. Okay. So there's one of the things that we hear is open houses are a lot of work. They do take some effort. Sometimes they can take a bit of money, especially if you're, if you're trying to put food together and trying to get the word out in creative ways. There's a lot of free ways to do advertising and there's some best practices that you can put into place to give your open houses a better chance of success. Yeah, I'm, I'm one of those people where I was in a club, I was just getting going in Toastmasters and I was voted in as the VPPR. And I took a look at some of my duties and I realized that I had to spread the word out to the public and things like open houses were a good way to spread the word. I didn't quite know what I was getting into. When I said the word open house, my fellow Toastmasters looked at me and with, with this sort of half smile on their face as though they were trying to mask a reaction. And I didn't understand it at the time, but I found out. We went to work on creating an open house and there's a lot of moving parts. So you were, you had some things in place and then, oh, did we get a speaker? Oh, did, well, who's, who's getting the word out where? Oh, maybe we should make flyers. Oh, you, you know, invite, invite people, you know, invite anyone, you know, because we were so afraid we'd go through all that work and we would have a poor attendance. Put together some slides to inspire you. First of all, why are we even looking at this right now? Toastmasters month is over. Yes, but every month is really Toastmasters month. We have a 10% growth rising tide challenge on right now because we recognize that clubs, as you're going about the business of learning and, and everybody's there to learn, clubs still need to invite more people to the experience because there's there's a life cycle to somebody's existence in a club. They might come for a specific reason. They might come for uh, just a specific season in their life. And then a few of us stick around because we enjoy it so much. We love meeting people and we continue to grow. So we still need to make up for those people that are just there for the, a specific reason or they're for a specific season. And then we have to let them move on with other things in their life, hoping at some point when Toastmasters makes sense to them, they'll come back. So the 10% rising tide challenge is meant to help our clubs strengthen, really focus on getting the word out to their perfect ideal future members. We've got a little after party event planned at the spring conference for those who achieve a 10% growth by the April 1st renewal state, which means those people that you've added to their club, they also have to renew. They are going to get a party pack for their team 
and they're going to get a club care package to take back home with them. They will have fame. They will have fortune <laughs> as, as good as we can give in Toastmasters. But we're aiming to make this a lot of fun and something to really celebrate. Because it never looks like an adventure when you're in the middle of it. I, I know that we get about this time of year and people are away because they're on holidays or they're sick or things are cropping up in their life. And all of a sudden you've got a few of those people who are always there. You can always count on doing much of the work. So you need more hands to jump in and participate. We're going to just pull into a tropical island cove for a little R&R &R at that spring conference party. We're going to have a photo booth. We're going to have a great deal of fun. So we hope that you all add those special new members. Plus, Joe Aginat has introduced the COP Award. Every club has already entered in this. It's the club outreach program. We are asking you to add brand new baby Toastmasters, never before Toastmasters, because we know that those are the people that are going to experience the most growth in the program right away. And hopefully we can convert them into raving fans of the program. They also have to renew April 1st in order to count for your team. Joe, you want to tell us about this award? This is my baby. I designed this cup. And you can tell because it's big, just like me, big. <laughs> this thing probably is about two and a half feet tall, weighs about just as much poundage. Every club gets to be entered. If you get the most brand new Toastmasters, I'm not talking about a dual member or a member who was a Toastmaster 10 years ago who still has a number, incidentally. I want brand new people. The club that gets the most brand new people in by March 3rd. On the, on the so Joe is very proud of all those brand new babies that you are bringing in and very, very grateful. We watch that, we watch that number grow every month and we keep adding more and more of the, our clubs to that list that's on the going down the right hand side of the screen at d21toastmasters.org. So if you bring brought in three or more brand new baby Toastmasters, your club is on that list on our site. We want to celebrate you. Yep. So keep up the great work. Also, as you're doing open houses, we recognize that this makes the adventure all that more exciting as we bring new people into the program, we get to hear their stories. They really make it a richer experience for all. So we're rewarding you for doing PR campaigns as well as membership campaigns. Make sure that you get that information into me so that I can make sure that you get treasure. Even though the club PR campaign challenge is over, we still wanna reward you for every campaign that you do. Toastmasters International has incentives such as Talk Up Toastmasters, which is happening right now until the end of March. And then again, they have a contest from May 1st to June 30th called Beat the Clock. Plus, there is a sponsor award. So if you're bringing in new Toastmasters, you brought them to the club, make sure that you're listed as the sponsor of that new member on their paperwork so that you get credit forever at Toastmasters International. You can look back at all the people that you've sponsored. And then of course, they reward the club for achieving results in the Distinguished Club Program. So lots of reasons to do this. And, and it all boils down to happy, healthy members and happy, healthy clubs supported by happy, healthy leaders. We know we need more members to do the work and make our clubs exciting. So here we go. You have different ways to bring people in to a very special opportunity for them to say yes to the possibilities of Toastmasters in their life. I'm going to go first because I'm the district director. <laughs> so first of all, let's take a look at open houses. Benefits. There are multiple benefits. I know it is work. In your competent leadership manual for those of you who are still working through it or have members that are working through it they get credit for doing a special event if you have an open house 
you can encourage them to step up and chair it, and that will give them a credit in their CL manual. There's a benefit for banding together, uniting as a team, and working on a project together. An open house could be a high performance leadership project, which again, gives you a special education credit. And if you've never gone through the high performance leadership project yet, it is a fantastic experience. I've, I've started many, I finished one, but every time I start the process, I remember just how special it is. There's also benefits as you work together as a team, you learn each other's strengths. You also learn each other's weaknesses and there will be help coming up from all corners to help those with weaknesses succeed. There's opportunities for mentoring others. There's opportunities to laugh together, to have things that went wrong, to, sell, to, to laugh about, and then to celebrate how you overcame them. And then of course, there's the pictures. As you reach out into the community, there's also the opportunity to spread the word about Toastmasters. So you're getting the word out into in front of people that may not come to your club, but they might find Toastmasters in another way. So uh, before I go into the planning of open houses, just I'm gonna tackle the questions. And if you can make comments to some of the best practices that you have seen in open houses that have made them successful. So while you type those in, I'm just gonna take a look at the Q&A and answer some of these questions. Rick Rupenthal says, my experience with open houses is that it is popular with the members because there's less pressure getting out of the comfort zone to invite people, relying on posters and be, oh, actually I should, I should show this to you. Relying on posters and VP of public relationships to do the work. Thoughts? Very good point, Rick. And the VP of PR, while they're in charge of getting the word out, they are just in charge of making sure the word gets out. Every single person on your team, in your club, is supposed to be getting the PR out. We make a promise when we join Toastmasters that we will bring new people to experience the Toastmasters program. So while it seems like there's less pressure and they can put the pressure on the VP of Public Relationships to do the work, a very good VP of Public Relations will say, all right, here are different ways that we can get the word out. Who wants to do what? Everyone needs to do something. And then they will follow up and see if people need extra help, need tips and ideas. So in it doesn't work with all clubs, but there's an opportunity to exercise leadership, which is another good thing about open houses. And let me go to the next question. How does this fit with the new Pathways program? There will still be open houses. It doesn't matter that Pathways is coming in there will be a, there will be projects to complete where people will have to do special projects or, or do something uh, that takes them outside their comfort zone and they will be able to choose what project they do whether it's an open house whether it's some other project there will always be opportunities to exercise leadership and we dive into pathways march the 20th you'll get a chance to explore a path and you'll see, oh, yeah, they've kind of covered all the bases here. Okay. You gotta remember one thing though, if I, if I can just kind of butt in there, you want to make sure that you're selling your club and Toastmasters at the same time. People come into your open house and they're going to see your club first. They don't know what a hill of beans about Toastmasters, or maybe they do, I don't know. But that first impression is so important that you're selling your club. So Pathways is just a program, just like we have our regular program. It's just a program. Your yeah. club makes the big difference. And for Rick, sorry, 
if I can just quickly answer what Rick said, your comfort zone, you're worrying about the comfort zone of your members being less pressure to invite. I got one thing to say to you, club ownership. Each one of your members should own your club. That club becomes theirs. They got to be, they got to be proud of it. If you have complete ownership of the club, you're going to want to get people in and you're going to get out there and you're going to invite people. That's basically what it comes down to. There that. is no that. low pressure about inviting people to a meeting. That's, 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 I'm sorry. No. <laughs> sorry. You just had a, to jump you in. Got a thumbs up, Joe. I, did I really? I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick and so is my computer. <laughs> okay so i'm just taking a look and I, I didn't see anyone typing madly with best practices so we'll go through a couple of things that that you need to be aware of as you are creating the plan for your open houses you really do need to plan so that's the downside of open houses is that you have to lay out your plan if you have a really great planner on your team, this is where they shine. And hopefully they can encourage others along the way. But you need to set the date. So you need to all agree on the date. That usually takes a vote. Votes take time. You need to set, well, you don't need to set a theme, but it's always fun to set a theme for your open house. It gives it a sense of occasion, makes it fun for everybody involved. And if you're going to have a theme, again, you need to vote on that so that you have buy-in from everybody on the team. When you get them involved in making decisions, they will take ownership of the result. They'll want it to succeed. So we have, um, then we have to agree on the committees or the task forces to buy it and conquer the work. You need to define who your chair is for the event. Who are your speakers? What's your strategy for speakers? Your chances are you're inviting people from the community. They're not necessarily your friends. They might be random people. You, like Joe said, you are the face of Toastmasters at that time. What do you want to share about Toastmasters? You have to pick your speakers and their speeches very carefully to get the desired effect. Usually you want somebody to share their before and after story of what Toastmasters has done for them. That's always good. Sometimes you wanna get somebody doing their icebreaker, one of their beginner speeches, who isn't really comfortable yet so that they can self-identify and go, oh, that's me. Oh, and, and then listen to the feedback and see how encouraging it is and that everybody claps and that person is boosted. Then you might want a really great speaker that inspires those people on what they want to become. Oh, if I stay in the program, I could become like that person. And they really see a mentor in that group that they want to bond with. You've got to get the word out. What advertising methods are you going to use? Who's going to do what? You've got a plan for food. You have to feed these people. It's part of the whole open house hospitality thing. There's some extra setup involved because you want to make that really great first impression. Do you have guest packages? You've got to have, make sure that you have enough guest packages. And the guest packages have that impact to somebody who knows nothing about Toastmasters so that they can feel not overwhelmed but informed. And then you have to train your greeters. Make sure that they feel comfortable in what they're doing. They come off as competent and confident, and they know exactly what to do with that person who's never been in the club before, guiding them through a certain process. So one, one thing that you'll wanna do before you have the open house is you'll want to conduct at least the first part of the moments of truth. And that's all about the impression people get when they walk into their club into your club so what does your club look like from the outside is it easy to find are there greeters at the door is there branding do people know that they're in the right place how are they greeted 
How are they made to feel in the process? Are they uh, asked for comments? Are they invited back? And I'm just taking the, I'm trying to keep my eye on the side because I, I noticed that there are a few best practices coming up in there. Um, I love this from Roberta, invite dignitaries and give them time to speak. Have a special event such as a club birthday potluck. Food helps defray the situation. Yes, you can divide and conquer through having a potluck and then you don't have to go spend a ton of money. Everybody contributes something. And then you never know what people's tastes are. There'll be something for everybody. And Rick, he said, best practice open house, lots of lead time for planning and organizing. Yes. So everything that you see here, it takes time. And you see that little plan, do, check, act? That's from a, a planner's point of view, our project manager's point of view. This is what we do in companies. So as you plan your open house, you're going to develop skills that are useful in the outside world. Before the date, you need to go back and confirm all your helpers. Make sure you've got all your ducks in a row and then reach out and invite neighboring clubs to fill seats. Make sure that you're going to have a full house. So if you have two guests that walk in, they're not walking to a half empty room with a whole lot of chairs. There's some activity and it looks like people are greeting each other for the first time and, and it's very warm and inviting. Then the guest processing system, which I'll get into a little bit later. Oh, <laughs> yeah, except if your neighboring club is one and a half hours away, that's a little trickier. But you can certainly invite your area director and your division director to come and help you out and get them to drag people with them. That's always a good thing. So you plan all of these things. Let's look at the moments of truth a little bit. There's different parts to moments of truth. You want to get through first impressions, but then you might also want to tackle membership orientation, which falls into that guest processing system I talked about. How do you orient your members? Is it effective? Could it use some tweaking? You want to have all that figured out before people join your club and then you're left going, ah, and then they get the wrong impression and in their first few meetings. So part of the first impression is that you want to be known as a quality club. The definition by Toastmaster Sanders of a quality club is it encourages and celebrates member achievements, provides a supportive and fun environment, offers a professionally organized meeting with variety. In those clubs, officers are trained in all aspects of club quality to ensure that First of all, members have access to formal mentoring program. That's something to look at in your guest processing system. Do you set people up with mentors? How do you make that match? Are provided evaluations that help them grow and are motivated to achieve their goals. So you wanna have all this figured out before you start. Our club mission is to provide positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. Hey, as a club, are we doing that? Make sure that you are before you bring in all those people that don't know you other than having walked in the door. Getting the word out, that's another challenge. So you do all this work to plan your events. You've got your speakers in place. You've got your helpers in place. Everyone's on committees. And then struggling to get the message to the right people. Our world has changed. We used to go out seeking information. And now we spend a lot of our time blocking information, only letting a little bit filter through that is very, very relevant to us. You've got to know what's relevant to your ideal future member, where they hang out, how they like to receive their information, what's going to connect to them. And then you've got to craft that message in a couple of different ways and get that word out into your community. You've got to have the people in place to do all of that. So it's a bit of a challenge, but it's a challenge that is it's gonna grow everybody on your team and it's fun to tackle. You do need to have a lot of lead time to do it though. Toastmasters International has recognized that we are the best kept secret and they did some investigation of how people find Toastmasters. 
The primary channels they noticed are the inviter, the trusted word of mouth. Getting your message out, having Facebook, having all these things, you've got to make sure that friends are inviting friends, which kind of sets Joe up for success there, I know. <laughs> People will trust the word of their friend, their family, their boss, or their colleague. So you've got to figure out how to get the word out in a shareable form so that they can spread it and invite more people to come. And they also recognize that we have a need for advertising in Toastmasters. When you're inviting your neighboring clubs, even if they're one and a half hours away, maybe they're not filling up their passport. So you can entice them and say, we've got stickers. We'll stamp your passport and then you can get points and maybe a prize. <laughs> it's certainly everybody who does something in their passport and we get it at the spring conference in whatever way, shape and form we get it, they're going to get a special little thank you gift from us. So, so you can use a little bit of bribery to get your neighbors there. Use your club's tagline. You just spent all this time creating your tagline, figuring out what is special about your club and why people love going there. So now take it, spread it out in a lot of different ways. Use it on flyers, use it on your website, use it on your Facebook page. Make little Instagram messages using your tagline and share that with friends. Now we, not all people are going to join your club. Also Toastmasters International noticed that we seem to have six member personas that are very relevant for Toastmasters, very evident in our club. We have the young professional, the self-help enthusiast, the career advancer, the retiree, the mature manager, and the international professional. And I can share these little write-ups with you later. But just important to know that you've got to know your audience before you get the message out. The young professional is usually encouraged to join Toastmasters by a manager. So are you reaching out to your local businesses and sharing the opportunity in a way that that manager is going to say to that young professional, hey, you know, you want to grow your skills? You should go to this club. They've got an open house. So there's a great opportunity for you. You've got the career advancer. So again, reaching out to your local businesses. But this person will probably find your club. They probably tried a couple of different ways to move their career forward. And they're looking for the right fit. So you've got to craft the language that's going to draw them in and make them see that Toastmasters has a program that's going to move them forward in their life and help them advance their career. You've got the self-help enthusiasts. They just, they want to be part of it and they want to learn things and then teach others. They want to mentor others. They, uh, they find a place where they're accepted. They, they get claps, they get approval, they get a chance to exercise their skills and they love it. They can be some of your best cheerleaders in your team. So they're not hard to, to bring in, but you need to make sure that your club is very encouraging so that that person isn't discouraged and does come back. You have the international professional who is looking to improve their English. Again, how does your club handle those people who English is a second language for them? Is your club the right place for them? Or when those people come through the door, is there a club that could serve them even better? Know the strengths of your club and also be aware of its weaknesses. Get into agreement of who you're really trying to attract. If you're trying to attract this person, then make sure that they know there's a leadership track and get them involved in leadership right away because they will learn English really fast and be a huge asset to your team if you get them on a leadership track. Then also there's the mature manager who's probably reached a plateau in their career and knows that they need to shore up some skills. So they're really there on purpose. You've got to share with them those 
success stories of people that have come into your club with specific challenges and overcome them. So again, crafting that language and getting it out there is important. And then the retiree, well, they're there for socialization. They're there to keep their mind active. They, they don't necessarily want to go on any leadership track or accomplish these great education goals. They love being involved and connected and they love helping people you know, in the background. So that's, those are the, the member personas. People, generally their first experience of Toastmasters starts with a fear of public speaking and that warm welcome through the door really, really matters. We need to show that we're flexible and that we can help them. They might lack knowledge, they might have limited expectations, but certainly why they stay they stay for the fun, they get greater self-confidence, they find a program that's structured and self-directed, they love being part of an international program that's very diverse. There is nothing like Toastmasters out there. So as you advertise your event, know that you have a great product. Your meeting is the product. You have a great product to put out there and you are doing people a service by reaching out to them and inviting them in. Toastmasters will impact all aspects of their life. So I, I won't go into any more. Before I go into the guest processing system, I am gonna let Joe <laughs> tell you all about Bring a Friend Night. So let me see if I can make Joe bigger. First thing. I want to ask Carol, how much for that wonderful program you just presented? How much is that going to cost the club? Depends. From beginning to end. Depends. Individuals stepping up and making contributions of their own baking and their own food will cut your costs tremendously. Oh, yeah. Using resources like Toast or like, uh, sorry, Facebook, Instagram, uh, free assets on the web. That won't cost you very much, but if you're running flyers and certainly people's time that they're contributing, I mean, there's an opportunity cost to that. Mm -hmm. If you're putting ads in local papers that are not free, but there's ways to get free advertising. You can do PR, but that takes some planning. And, and I would encourage all of you to have some really great personal success stories that you get out to the local paper and try and advertise your club. But getting paid advertising out there, you're investing. If you want to increase the traffic on your Facebook event, then of course you're paying for ads. If you use Eventbrite, it's free if you don't charge for your event. So that's an interesting mm -hmm. way to get the word out. However, I am hearing that Eventbrite is only successful if you have an audience that you reach out to. You not, right. not only create the event, but then you have to tell all of your members to spread it out and share it. So mm -hmm. maybe maybe it's not quite, you could cut your costs, your physical costs, there are ways, but certainly the cost of the member's time is very large. And that's why it makes people stop doing open houses because they know how much time it costs them and they're measuring their tangible results versus what they put in. Let, let me share quickly with you the cost to put on a successful open house in a Toastmasters meeting with, okay, let's say you have 10 members. That cost is gonna be anywhere from one to $250 to do it properly. That's a big amount, and I would hate to be your treasurer because they're just going to cringe because they know right away that they're not going to get that money back. It's not going to come back. I'm sorry. You're relying on the public to come in. One thing, Carol, you stated there earlier was bring your passport. The public don't have passports. That's Toastmasters already that have the passports. So well, what you're saying is, 
Come on in, Toastmasters. Come to our open house. No, I don't want Toastmasters at my open house. We're not having an anniversary sale. We want new members. So don't come with your already membered Toastmasters. Come with a new person. Okay? So, yeah, I'm sorry. Open houses to me is an anniversary, a birthday party, some kind of a celebration that your Toastmasters can have and have a good time, and they're not afraid to spend some money on it. Let's get something in there that's going to be next to nothing called Bring a Friend. Oh, I love this program, Bring a Friend, and it is so easy. There is no advertising to do whatsoever. So right away, you've already saved $125. Just like that. No advertising. You are the advertiser. You, as the member of the club, have received an email from your vice president of education, me, already. And I am inviting you to bring a friend on a certain date. Every vice president of education should be planning on doing this. Send out your club members an invitation to come. It's a party for you, the members, because guess what? You're going to bring your friends along to enjoy that party with you. So no cost for advertising, no cost for food. What? You have 10 to 12 people in your group. Everybody brings a snack from home. Or they go to the store and they buy it themselves. It's each member is responsible to bring a small snack. Not a big problem. You'll always have food left over. And then somebody can take it to the food bank the next day. What a great gift. So both people or two groups are now, you know, getting from it. Your Toastmasters who are enjoying a lovely break and the homeless. So there you go. You're feeding people. Well done. Didn't cost you a cent. Your treasure is all smiles by now. Your president and your vice president membership, or your membership vice president, they're really happy because they see members bringing in guests. It's called bring a friend. We all work. We all work. Or we go to school. And what's happening there? We are with people on a daily basis. Those people see something in you. What do they see? They see a brighter future for you. You're always smiling because you're successful. You, they see you getting raises before they are. You're moving up the ladder in your corporation. Your communication is getting a lot better. Meanwhile, they're sitting back there and you're still going, um, um, uh, well, uh, you're not doing that anymore. What's happened? How do you, how, how have you been proved? What's your secret, Joe? Now, I'm not going to tell you what my secret is, but I tell you what I'll do. I will pick you up next Wednesday and I'm going to bring you to a place, and I'm going to introduce you to some people who have really helped me improve myself. Bring a friend. Pick them up. Don't invite your friend and say, I'll see you at the certain place at a certain time and hope you get the right bus, because you're never going to see those people there. You bring a friend. That's what the whole thing is called. Bring a friend. Three simple words. Pick them up. Three more <laughs> simple words. Drive them home. It's a power <laughs> of three. You bring the friend. You got to take them home. Don't leave them at the hall. Somebody <laughs> did that once. And it Aww. gets embarrassing. Okay. <laughs> I felt real bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah, you bring that friend. You make sure you take that friend back with you. Okay. So, what does your evening look like? You want to make sure 
that you put on the best show that you can put on. And that's what we do every week. The vice president of education is a entertaining manager, an entertainment manager. That's exactly what he is. He's putting on a show each week for everybody to be enjoy enjoying. So what I'm going to do, and Carol's going to put it up on the screen, hopefully you can all see it. You want to put the agenda up, please? Whoa. First, there's the agenda. Oh, of course I didn't load that? it. I was going to send it to them with the recording. Oh, you, oh, great. Well, I know. You know That's what? Fine. I you know, you let, ask let her the to do one little thing. <laughs> And <laughs> it doesn't get done, you know? <laughs> oh, so, put, it up, put it up now because you're big. And she asks me, look out, it's got to be done immediately. Look, I'm going to stop so, my webcam okay. too. So it's even so bigger. Here we go. There we go. Okay. This is the agenda. And I made this up last night. It's very simple. You can't see it really, but I'm just going to read through it for you. This is based on a two hour meeting. You'll have to scrunch things down if you're only meeting for an hour. But your very first thing you're going to have, you're going to have your sergeant at arms, and he's going to introduce your Toastmaster, me. I'm going to be the Toastmaster tonight. I'm going to take three or four minutes, and I'm going to welcome each and every guest that's there and thank each and every member for bringing their guest. Then we have a joke or a smile story. You're still going to have a regular meeting. <coughs> but it's a regular meeting on steroids. Sorry. Your general... Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I was going to give you a moment. <laughs> By the way, if you have any questions that, that are coming up as you're listening to Joe speak about successful Bring a Friend Nights, just pop them in the Q&A and I'll keep my eye on them. Yeah, please. You're generally evaluated. You want to have <coughs> as the vice president of membership or the president. Give them something to do. <coughs> you're going to have your timers. You're going to have your grammarians, your ballot counters, the whole, well, not so much the ballot counters, but your table topic evaluator and a table topic master, because we want to hear <laughs> what these guests sound like. Okay. <clears throat> I'm sorry about this tickle I got. It's okay. In a two-hour meeting, you can easily have five speakers. Five. I'm going to go with four tonight because that's what I have here. Your three speakers are going to be from your club. So you want to have a new member or the newest member give a speech it might be their second or their third speech that they've done but get them to speak your second person you're going to have is one that's been there for three or four months or up to a year at least a little bit more advanced your third speaker in your club if you have them is a dtm or the highest education status person that you have in your club so it might be a gold uh, communicator person i don't know but if you have a dtm use them don't let them sit in the chair and do nothing very important your fourth speaker and this gets really fun is you're going to have a trio member a district representative if you're in vancouver you're going to have a carol carter or a sean gold if you're over here on the island, hopefully you might have a Joe Gannett <laughs> or a Carol Carter because she'll come over. But try to have a district trio member present. Or a division director. Or an <coughs> area director. Um, did I really interrupt you when you were talking? <laughs> I'm just, I, if 149 get, get, clubs suddenly me? ask me to come to their event. Questions, questions and answers, you know, you can put it in the queue. <laughs> <laughs> what are you promising? <laughs> <laughs> See, there's now I get that thumbs up. <laughs> if a trio member can't attend, 
we're in a in a province where we have champions. We have a lot of champions over on the mainland, and we do have some champions right here on the island. I'm talking contest champions, international stage champions. I don't care whether you won or not. You're on the international stage to me. You're a champion. Get a hold of that contest person. Get a hold of that international champion. Bring them up to your meeting. They love to speak. That's what they're there for. They're there for you. And they would give their eye teeth for that opportunity to speak in front. The last bring a friend night I had, I had Tanya Amon, who was our district representative to internationals. And she did an excellent job. She didn't, she didn't win, but that's okay. She got on stage. She lives in Souk, which is a mile, well, two hour trip away from me. She didn't bat an eye. She was up here just like that. And she brought a bunch of people with her. So it's always fun when they do that. So definitely bring a contest speaker, an international speaker. So you've had four speeches. And you know what? It's really neat because they're all speaking about the same thing. Why I joined Toastmasters and what has it done for me? You get four different versions of that every single time. There is no Toastmaster has joined Toastmasters for the same reason. There isn't. Sure, we all say, oh, I, I joined Toastmasters because I was afraid of public speaking. We are all afraid of public speaking. So you can't even use that as an excuse for joining Toastmasters. I was nagged into it when I joined. I joined because I was nagged by my mother-in-law. I didn't want to hear it anymore. So my wife finally said, well, why don't you just go? And I went. And I haven't looked back. I haven't looked back. I've been a member ever since. And I'm glad that she nagged me. You're going to have an exceptional break. Or no, before, after the last speech. Then you're going to have your table topics master get up. Now, one thing with this is that everybody in that room is so inspired by now. And everybody's smiling and having a good time. That that table topics master has to keep things up on a high. So he's going to introduce the first speaker. He's going to get a, uh, one of the Toastmasters. That person has a friend. Don't forget that. He's going to be, come up. He's going to speak whatever the Table Topics Master does. And then guess what's going to happen? The Table Topics Master is going to invite his friend to come up. I know we usually go three or four or five Toastmasters. And then we always say, well, gee, maybe one of the guests would like to speak now. No, I don't want to speak. Well, guess what? We're going to have a chance to speak. Everybody is going to have a chance to say something. So you don't take no for an answer. Come on up. Your friend will come up and stand with you if he has to, to make it easier for you. But it's really simple. You don't have to make a big speech. One to two minutes, that's all we want you to speak for. And in that one to two minutes, when they speak in table topics, I've been doing this for so long now, I can tell exactly what kind of a Toastmaster they're going to be. Are you going to be a professional speaker? Are you going to be just a run-of-the-mill Toastmaster who doesn't really want to go that far? But that's okay, because those people I love to work with. Those are the ones I'll mentor. And those are the ones that go further than they ever thought possible. After you've had your table topics, you're going to have the best break ever. 15 minutes. You're going to take 15 minutes. Forget the five-minute stuff. Take 15 minutes because there's lots of food. All these people brought food. You had 12 people show up with 12 guests. You got to feed 24 people. So you're going to have 15 minutes to do that. 
and they're enjoying their snacks and everything else. Meanwhile, they're meeting all these other guests and other Toastmasters and that, and the vice president of membership is getting all set because what he's doing right now is he's getting all the packages ready to give out. Bam, break time. There you go. Bam, break time. There you go. And then guess what happens before you go? Sit down. Your treasurer is going to come by with the membership form and say, I see a smile on your face. Here you go. You give them the membership form that night. Bring a friend night has no room for three free meetings. I'm sorry, it just doesn't. You're going to get them that first night. When you go to an organization, to a meeting, and you say have 24 people in a room, all exciting, they're clapping, they're all smiling, they're having a great time, and they're all listening to these speeches, what's going to happen? You're going to want to be part of that. You want to be part of that now. You sign them up that night. It's so important. You get them that night. Then you have your evaluators. Your evaluators are right from your club. And for the trio member or the, the um, contest speaker, you have a second trio member present, hopefully, or a DTM to do the evaluation. Okay? For th those two people only. Have a DTM or another trio member do the evaluation. I'd love to evaluate Carol. She never speaks when I'm around, so. Well, while you're speaking, I'm, I'm just going to conduct a, a quick poll here. Just keep speaking. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm inviting you all to. You've, ah, right. You've heard the evidence. So, so as you, have, you have top, top evaluations from your members. And now your guests are starting to learn. They're saying, well, wow, look at this. They're talking about all these people, and they're giving good advice. You get a good advice here. I want to be here. I want to sign up right now. How much is this going to cost me? Now, when I do a bring a friend night, if we can sign them up that first night, I'll tell my treasurer, give them a 10% discount just because they believe in what they want. Give them a 10% discount, and that's going to get them here. You know, if you have 10 people in your group, 12 people in your group, and you show up with 12 people as guests, you're guaranteed. Now, listen to this. You're guaranteed to have a rise in your membership of three. Three people will sign up that first night. If you don't get three people to sign up, you did something wrong. If you have 15 people, guess what? You're going to have 30 people in your group. How many people are you going to have sign up? You're going to have anywhere from four to five people sign up. I like those returns. I like and those so returns how, a lot. How have the returns been in your club? Uh, usually about 80%, 80 to 90%. Oh. We have, we have, and I mean, we, we have a big club right now. We have 27 members, or 28 because it's not closed yet, but we have 28 members. And the last time I did a, a bring a friend night, we had 16 members. And I said, you know what? We don't have to worry about doing a bring a friend night, but I want 30 members in this club. So we're going to have another one. And we did 16 members, brought 16 guests. And that first night, I signed up eight people. That's half. To me, that's a pretty good, you know, come back on your exposure. We got half. And then the week after that, I signed up two more people. So it happens. It the works. The results are there. The results are there. It works, you know. Mm -hmm. And you can go on to this, on to TI there and look at it right there when they, when they started. You know, I had eight people sign up this year. 
and that was from Bring a Friend Night. I thought, look at my DCP points have already been done. Mm-hmm. Didn't even have to work on it. That's good. We, we and I'm going to do. Have- I'm going to do another Bring a Friend Night with with 28 members. You watch, because right. I've raised the amount up to 35 now. So, well, the poll ro- poll results are in. And- oh, did I did I win? Did I uh, win? That yes, you did. Joe won. <laughs> Joe won. But there's still somebody who's going to do an open house. So you know what? You open houses, or, or whether you do a big ring a friend night, you heard guest package in both versions. Does your club have a guest package, Joe? What's in your guest package? We have in our guest package. We have everything, right from Ti to a, a letter that was written from an old member, uh, one of the original members, one of our charter members wrote a letter. And we just have copies of all that. Uh, why are you here? A Toastmaster wears many hats, you know? All these things are free from Toastmasters, all of them. And you can copy them if you want, or you can get the whole package from TI. It doesn't cost you anything except for the shipping and the handling. But you know what? You got to give them something. Give them something. Bam, here you go. And don't let them go home with that application form. Yes. You keep that application form here. Don't let them take that home. Yeah. Um, Whether you're starting a new club or whether you're inviting guests to your existing club, that is a kiss of death. Never let the application form walk out of the room. No. Yeah. So you get them to fill in a little bit of information. They can come back at the next meeting with a check and, and finish filling it out. Um, if they fill in their email address and their phone number, you can reach out to them. Always make sure that you phone them. Mm-hmm. Always. Say, hey, you know, and when you do your good of or- good of the order, you make sure that you hear from each and every single guest. I don't care if it's going to take you 20 minutes just for good of the order. You have to hear from those guests. You've got to know what they wanted or what they didn't like. And, you know, If you don't, you're cutting your own throat right. because you don't know what they want. Right. Remember when I said first impressions, very important. And even Carol said it with, with the... Uh, um, with one, with one of our head sessions, Moments of Truth. Yeah. Uh, first impressions, that's the first thing. And your area directors, that's the first thing they say on their club visits, first impressions. Mm-hmm. So if you've never come to Couch and Toastmasters in Duncan, I invite you, definitely invite you to come and see what a premier club is all about, how we work, how we do our things. And bring money, because I will sign you up. <laughs> and he will. <laughs> okay, so a guest processing <laughs> system. Let's just quickly go through that. I'm taking a look at the time. And it starts before that guest ever walks through the door. So you have already decided what you need in place, what impression you want to give to that person walking through the door. Are, do you have name tags? Do you do name tents that sit in front of people if you're at tables? How, how are you going to make sure that they feel comfortable and that they feel that they're in the right place and they can interact freely with people around them? Do you sit them next to an experienced member who's going to walk them through the program? All of these are best practices that you should have in place. Greeters at the door, you should have more than one because a greeter can get really busy catching up with somebody they haven't seen in a while and a brand new person walks through the door and just walks past. It, it's very easy to miss somebody in the mix. Do you train your greeters? So they're set, they have a process where the, the person comes through, oh, I've, have you been to this club before? Oh, you haven't, please come here, sign our guest book. What brought you to our club? Very important question to ask and make note of it. Make note of the spelling of their name. Make sure that their name gets passed on to the either the sergeant at arms, if it's your sergeant at arms that introduces the guests or your 
um, chair of the meeting or your president if the president gives a message and says hello to the guests. So whoever it is, have that system figured out. Number one, you want th them to feel welcome when they walk in the room. And then you need to have information to help them self-identify with the opportunity. This is a great opportunity for them. Why? You have them sitting next to the, a person and you have everybody in your club trained to do this at the break. So how are you enjoying the meeting? What's What stood out for you? Get them to find out why did what, what that person there, what are they looking for? And listen, our listening skills are key. We develop our listening skills as much as our speaking skills in Toastmasters. When that guest feels heard and understood, they're going to believe that these people are really smart and amazing and they really want to be part of this group. They're going to feel like they belong. And then that person guides them up to the food table or connects them with other members on the break and connects them with somebody relevant to what they want to overcome. This person overcomes exactly what you were talking about and you get them talking. At the end of the meeting, that person then turns to the guests and says that magical, so what did you think of the meeting? They share a few things and then, and then you say, I think that this would be a really great place for you to develop blah, whatever it is that they shared. And did you know that we actually mentor our members? So we'll set you up with somebody who's a bit of a buddy for you. And they'll walk you through so you understand how to work the Toastmasters program. It is self-paced. They will help you to take the right steps for you. We are warm. We are caring. We will always clap. And we'll nudge you forward and not let you give up on yourself. But we'll never give you more than you can handle. And then you ask that person to join. Asking. Asking is the key. Because if nobody asks, that person might think, oh, they don't really want me. So that, that's what you do in the room. Now, should they walk away and say, oh, I have to think about it. Do you have a process for following up? I went home from North Delta Power Talkers. Now, I had signed up, but somebody had the job of writing a little card, and they probably wrote it right there at the meeting, popped it in the envelope, put my address on it, stuck a stamp on it, and popped it in the mail on their way home. Because I got that card, I think, a day later, saying, it was really nice to meet you. We really enjoyed having you at our club. We hope you come back again. Our next meeting is. So the invitation to return and that handwritten invitation, that means a lot. But do you have a phone system where you follow up? If it's a bring a friend nights, you're following up on your friend. So that's easy. But maybe somebody feels uncomfortable following up with their friends, like they're giving too much pressure and they need to reach out to other club members and say, I uh, can you phone them? Because I think that they would really connect with you. And I think hearing it from you, how Toastmasters would make a difference, is really going to matter. So scheme, can I figure out what you're doing after the guest is gone? Now, just because they said that they were signing up doesn't mean that they'll be back. And we've seen people who have paid their membership dues and never set foot in the door again. So you do have to have a system and follow it, whether that person has signed up or not. Leaving that impression of, I'm in the right place. Yes, I can't wait to go back. Oh, these people are amazing. That's going to make all the difference to how they start their adventure in Toastmasters. Find that extra help. Get newer members involved and get them leading projects right away. Get your leaders to step forward. Get senior members to train or mentor others. Get everybody involved in putting this process together. And I, and I see that we've run over time. I don't see any other questions in the Q&A. If you have any questions, please pop them up there. Uh, but also, just wanted to direct you, you can go on to d21toastmasters.org onto the article on Webinar Wednesdays. And there is a Google form where you can request topics for Webinar Wednesdays that you want to know more about. Joe is 
a wealth of information and we'd love to get him involved in more webinar Wednesdays. Thank you, Joe, for being on this one. It's so good to good to play with you and arm wrestle with you a little. Yeah, well, there you go. Next week you'll be <laughs> hair pulling. <laughs> and we've got Sean, we've got other people that are in leadership, but we also have subject matter experts throughout our district. So if you are a subject matter expert or you know a subject matter expert and you'd like to share your expertise or like them to share their expertise, do go get them to fill out the form on being co-presenting or being part of the presentation process. And we will reach out to them, find out what they want to talk about and get them involved. The more of our members we hear from, the more everyone's going to grow. They don't just want to hear from us. They want to hear from more people. Can I just say one quick thing before we close up here? Rick did ask a question I never did get a chance to answer, so I'm going to ask it, answer it right now. He asked, what's your closer? What's your closer? Well, do you want to be successful? Mm -hmm. Most people do. Then let me help you with your career in Toastmasters. I'll guarantee you be success within a year. Now, with Pathways coming up, let me set you on the right path to success. You deserve it. There you go. That's how you want to phrase it. That's You'll great. get them coming. That's brilliant. Oh, oh you got a thumbs up. Another, another thumb up. Okay. As a bucket, as a bucket you know, Rick. <laughs> we want to celebrate you and your success. I love it. Your success. We want to see all of our clubs meet the 10% Rising Tide Challenge. This is Joe's party. By the way, it's coming out of his budget. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's my party. And it's going to be big. Everything I do in Toastmaster is big, right? It's big. It's big. <laughs> and this is going to be this is going to be huge. There's be lots fun. of reasons, lots of reasons to be there. Joe is one of them, and we're going to have a lot of fun. So we hope to see you. April 20th to the 22nd in Kelowna at the Coast Capri Hotel. And at the very least, we hope that your club gets the 10% Rising Tide Challenge. Because if you do, whether you sign up for the entire event or not, you'll at least be able to get into the after party for free. Thank you I want, so much. I want to thank each and every one of you for being here tonight. I know we're going to send the, the recording out to people. Uh, but and I'm going to even step up one more closer there for Carol to look, give her more work to do, because I want to see the recording go out to each club to uh, to help them with their bring a friend night. I want the, each club to be successful, and there's no reason why you can't be successful before June 30th. Bring a friend night. You hold one. You got three members. You had 10, you got 13. Hold another one. There's no reason why you can't do two in one month. So now you're going to have another one with 13 members. That's going to be 26 people. Bam, you're going to get there. You'll have your membership in no time at all. Don't be afraid of it. Thank you for coming. All right. Thank you. Bye.